Hey everyone, congratulations to Game and Gladiators. The first major tournament to compete under the new Frontier banner, 7.33, which we'll get to after all the tournament news. Tundra Esports, Shopify Rebellion, Game and Gladiators, and Team Liquid all had to get their feet wet when Valve decided to drop the patch the day before the Dream League playoffs. Tundra Esports was the first team to get eliminated and it was by the hands of Murtha. She recently got her Aghanim's ability as well as added to Captain's mode. In the lower bracket final, Shopify Rebellion was not prepared. Game and Gladiators played with speed and determination and ran them down within 30 minutes, where the average game for patch 7.33 has risen. In the grand finals, it's what everyone wanted, a full 5 game set, and in this full 5 game set, it really showed what the current meta is gearing towards, even though it's early. Murata is a very strong carry, Disruptor is still a heavily favorite support, and on the offlane, Underlord is one of the favorites because of his ultimate ability to move around the map. And for items, Crimson Guard is one of the popular ones. Here's the ending to Dream League Season 19, and the first team punching their ticket to Riyadh in July. Daniel's gone, they'll catch him in the Requiem! Can they Coming even kill the him? Back, but he's able to get the Shadow Dance off. They can't even kill He can him. look to reset, jumps out of the side, Boxy tries to get some sort of setup, but it's not gonna happen. Duraccio's out of there, Quinn, he's focused on the objectives. Cleaning up this top set of racks. Liquid, they've got to try and hop, but it's four versus five. As Gaming Gladiators, they're collapsing onto Zai. Zai getting shredded by the physical Another damage of Quinn. They take out Zai. No buyback on him. Nisha's gone. All three cores out without buyback. Duraccio's diving the base. He wants more. He's looking for the team wipe. Poxy goes Scepter. Duraccio has the two. Poxy trying the best with the outplay. <laughs> it will be able to sort of trap into the trees. Poxy. <laughs> He's being slippery. <laughs> He's making them work for it. He's like, you're not killing me. You're going to end the game. I'm not dying. They'll go for the tier fours. They'll look to close this up. They can taste the victory here now. Gaming Gladiators on to the ancient. It's game over. GG, it's called. Ladies and gentlemen, Gaming Gladiators take this game five. And with that, they are the Dream League Season 19 champions taking home $300,000 and securing themselves a spot at Riyad Masters. Well deserved. Uh, this game was... Flawless, it felt like from start to finish. The movements in order to set that tempo, to set themselves up for this immense gold lead. And then it's like Liquid, they're just looking around for kills, but they just can't find them. They get the Aegis, they can't force any type of issue there in their draft. It's a tempo draft versus a greed draft, and this greed draft, it was always ahead. I mean, this. In the DPC, there will be tiebreakers in China. Piggy Killer has already secured the Division 1 spot, but the last spot falls between three teams Meteor Gaming, Supernova, and Team Bright. In Southeast Asia, the tiebreakers will be for the middle teams because Boomy Sports and Sertia has secured the two spots going into Div 1 for Tour 3. In Eastern Europe, they're not fully done, but Namiga Gaming is currently the only team going to Division 1. The final spot is very much in the air between three teams. In Western Europe, Team Secret will be heading back to Division 1. They did have a scare against Ivy when Team Secret lost Game 2 with Mega Creeps. D2 Hustler will have a tiebreaker with Ancient Tribes for the final spot. Here's the ending to Game 3 between Team Secret against Ivy. Team Secret was just far too strong. Very ancient uh, on the, in their fountain. That, that's pretty bad. Yamich getting very low once again. Can they at least get this kill? Doesn't even look like it. Johnny, he's gonna pop. Doesn't quite. Yes, he does. He does die. Chrysalis looking for the ultra kill now. Moving on to Stjokov. He's got the pounce to come in here. He's got an Aegis as well. So you bet he's gonna go for the rampage. Moving across towards Ade as well. Is he gonna get it? Yes, he is. Oh. Secret. They are turning them inside out. It's the Chrysalis show. Yeah, he's online. Runs down, he has a great lane. It's hyper aggressive Sharpoon in this game. Coming out as well. Playing six. Yeah. So he's got he's got that hold. Like he had it in that last fight. We saw its effects. Yep. It is pretty nice for the Slark and keeping that chase. Full ags on our mill. Push just keeps going. No reason to stop. Ivy. Ooh. Threatening the golem here, could land it onto two, and it's absolutely going to do exactly that. Chrysalis just keeps on eating them up. There's going to be a GG soon, I'm pretty sure. This game doesn't look playable anymore. In North America, it's pretty much set for two division teams getting promoted. Alpha and San King Gomez are both 5 and 1. They will play each other to see who wins the first place prize. In South America, Mad Kings are perfect and will be promoted. They do have one more game against Lava, who must beat Mad Kings to force a tiebreaker, and they will play on April 25th. Alright, on to patch 7.33. This is a major patch, but not big enough for Valve to call 8.0. So here are the big changes to Dota. 
The patch is named New Frontiers because the entire map is changed. First off, the map is 40% bigger with more terrains. Your old hunt may be covering your mini map just slightly. The game also has a lot of new buildings all around the map in the new 7.33 era. Roshan now has two homes. One pit will be in the top left corner of the map and the other will be on the bottom right corner. During the night, he will be on the dire side and during the day, he will be on the radiant side. When the night and daytime shifts, Roshan will be taking the twin gates. There are two new buildings called twin gates and they're located next to each team safely and can be used at any time. Inspired by the anime, there are now lotuses in the game. There are two lotus pools on either side of the safe lane for players to collect. They will spawn periodically and if you collect three or more, they will start to combine into a greater lotus. And into the late game, if you have cheese, the cheese and the greater lotuses can be combined into a block of cheese. Everyone asks for new bosses and Valve answered the call. There are two new powerful neutral creeps that spawns 20 minutes in the game near each base. They are called Tormentors. Killing the Tormentors will grant Aghanim Shard to the lowest net worth player on your team. The Tormentors are equipped with Mega Shields that reflect damage and will grow stronger every time. There are new wars in the game, or the Call Watchers. There are neutral wars that are inactive until they are claimed by either team. They last for 7 minutes or until they get, sabot or until they get sabotaged by the other team. When a team kills Roshan, all Watchers will turn to their side. Valve has added an easy way for teams to reach Tormentors on their side by adding a Defender's Gate. The Defender's Gate is close to the Tormentor and only your team can go through it. The days with Tomb of Knowledge are over. Valve has removed Tomb of Knowledge and added a new room called Wisdom Room. They spawn next to the Tormentor and will grant XP to heroes using it. Another new room got added as well. The Shield Room will spawn alongside other power rooms in the river. The Shield Room will give you 50% of your max HP as a barrier. Valve admitted they made a mistake when Voice Bear got introduced. So they fixed that by introducing a universal attribute in addition to strength, intelligence, and agility. The universal heroes will gain 0.6 damage from each stat from any attribute. The Black King bar got reworked. It is now a basic dispel that grants 50% magic resistance and debuff immunity while it's on. Negative effects from debuffs won't affect you, and you will be protected from pure and reflected damage. However, if the duration ends before any debuff ends, they will all be applied onto your hero. Neutral items also got reworked. Now neutral creeps will not drop the neutral item, they will drop a token instead. And from that token, you will get to choose which item you would like. A surprising change in this patch comes to stuns. It's a nerf. Almost every disable in the game, their duration has been reduced. Alright, that's all we'll cover here because there's way too much to cover. Make sure you look up what hero has been changed, what new item has been added, and how the map is vastly different. Thanks for watching. We'll be back next week with the final Division 2 standings and the start of the Berlin Major. Like, share, and subscribe, and have a good one.